Michael, I wanted to thank you so much for being with us this morning. And I have known you for a long time and know that you're very, very focused on uh, your students and the way that they go through this journey. Um, and would love to hear a little bit more about what makes you passionate about, about coaching. Thanks so much, Judith. I'm excited to work with you and the rest of the team. We have known each other for a long time, and, and it's particularly exciting to be able to work with you together in this capacity. Um, I've been a student-facing professional for over 25 years. That's what gets me going in the morning, being able to make a difference in the experience of the student. And I've done it from a variety of different angles, whether it was admissions and financial aid or career management or academic advising or running entire programs. It, to me, it, being able to understand the student experience from each of those angles hopefully enabled me to bring something more to the table for the student who was working with me and was in front of me at, at that point. Um, I think when I look at what it is specifically about working with students, I'll tell you a little story. One of my first job interviews out of undergraduate, I went in and I was asked by an HR professional, so, you know, what's your long-term goal? And my answer was as horrific and naive as it could possibly have been. <laughs> my answer was, well, I just like to be happy. And the woman was very patient, but kind of eye rolled and put her head down. And, and I knew that I had done something wrong and I had no idea what. And so I look back at that story as a bit of an allegory for me as to why I love working with students. It's to demystify the stuff that they don't know. I wasn't coming from a background uh, you know, where I knew the ins and outs of interviewing or I understood what that unspoken choreography was like. Oh, I just lost you. Michael? Sure, you bet. Great. So I recognized that I had done something wrong in this interview, but I didn't know what it was. And so I, I feel like that's a good allegory for me. Um, when I look at why I love working with students, it's to help them understand the stuff that I didn't understand at that point in my career. It's to help them to demystify and to understand what's expected of them, even if that expectation isn't spoken. I, I feel like there's a bit of a, an unspoken choreography mm -hmm. to the job market, to applying to graduate schools, um, to lots of things that they may not have had access to. And you know what, what I feel really passionate about is being able to help students to gain that access um, and to understand what's being asked of them and, and help them to realize some of the potential that they bring to the table. So some of your interest and passion for coaching really comes from your own, your own experience at, at the very beginning stages, it sounds like. Oh, absolutely. My own early failures were a great proving ground <laughs> to help me to understand, well, you know, that really stunk and I want to be able to help people to not have that experience and to understand a little bit more of what they're walking into and how they can be successful. So do you feel like your coaching superpower would then be the fact that you had you, you, were, you were there, you know, you were kind of like you had gone through this and, and you bring I, that empathy? Absolutely. I, I think that empathy and listening are two elements that I've, I've really worked hard to develop over uh, my professional career. Um, and what I'd say maybe more specifically, among the things that I love, I love helping students do the entire process. But I would say in particular, the interview process is one that I just kind of rub my hands and I'm like, okay, let's, <laughs> let's, let's get together on this. And That's great. what I've found is, is that I can hear someone's story. I'll have them tell it in their language and I will then feed back what I feel like I've heard mm -hmm. in a way that maybe sparks a different way of presenting it, a way that is genuine to them, but polished enough that they feel good about it. And uh, I like that back and forth repartee with students where we're really working as collaborators to refine their story mm -hmm. uh, so that it comes out in a way that it's them, it's the genuine them, but they feel like it's the best version of them. It's almost like workshopping something, I guess, is, exactly. is what I'm thinking about exactly. that conversation. 
That's exactly right. And the, the workshop content is the student's background. It's their aspiration. It's what they hope to do in the short and the long term with their careers. And, the, and what's great is that it's stuff that they know about themselves. You know, they're not plucking it out of thin air. It's, it's part of them. And that, I'm sure, exactly. makes for a very interesting conversation. That's exactly right. And I would say, you know, Judith, that's, that's a great point that this is content that they know that you know, nobody can know it better than them. But I'd say, you know, that's, that's one of my key recommendations to students and clients is they know themselves better than anybody else. That said, what I see over and over again is that folks often want to jump very quickly to the transactional. You know, can you help me with the resume? Help me with the application? Mm -hmm. Let's jump into a mock interview. And they're missing or, or uh, maybe going around a very critical foundational step, which is they really need to step back and do the work on self-assessment and understand what they bring to the table and be able to articulate that. Um, the students that I felt have done that, they've really spent the time slowing down to speed up. Mm -hmm. um, they focus on that self-assessment. They get a good sense for what makes them tick, what their strengths are, where they're challenged, what they're hoping to do by means of going to a top MBA program. Um, those students, in my experience, tend to be much more successful than the ones who look at it as a very transactional, you know, what word do I need to optimize sure. this in my application? That I feel like is, is not as effective as someone who really comes in with a deep-seated knowledge of who they are and why they're unique. And it's, I get it, it's, there's, this, there's a real pressure to sort of produce, produce, produce. And sometimes right. it's like, as that part of like getting ready, it's almost like getting the ingredients ready to, to make a cake. You know, you That's can't, right. you gotta like get everything out and, and make sure you have the right amounts and sort of look at it. And I am the queen of making a recipe and then forgetting that I do, do not have something <laughs> at home. So I know, and I'm like, oh wow, what can I sub in? But I, I totally right, understand right. your perspective. Um, Michael, you've been, you've had, you've had so many different kinds of interactions with students. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I just incredible when I think about the different roles that you've played. Do you have a success story of someone that you've coached in particular that you, that you think would resonate that, um, you know, you'd like to share? Sure. So I've, Judith, I've been really fortunate, you know, between years ago, being an outside reader for Columbia and Haas, and then more formally stepping into roles at Columbia Business School and Kellogg and, and working even at a number of other institutions. I've been really fortunate that I've worked with thousands and thousands of students and tried to help them to navigate their educational and professional landscapes. I think some of the stories that resonate with me the most, I've been, again, I've been really fortunate to work with folks who are coming with a background that is consistent with their targets and they are laser focused and, and I've been able to maybe stand on the side and to help them tweak and refine their approach so that they continue on that successful track. I think some of the stories that really resonate with me are, are some of the ones where they're coming from a background that's not within business. And they're saying, you know, I, I feel drawn to this area, but I speak an entirely different language. I am coming from a background where none of what I have done is in its current form going to resonate with the people that I, I want to work with. And, and I feel like working with students uh, coming in where they're unsure about how they're going to communicate the value of their previous experience, um, whether it's to an MBA program or to an employer down the road, that really gets my attention. And that's something that in particular, uh, I love working with. So, you know, there's one story of a person that uh, I've worked with folks, you know, across the spectrum, including coming from uh, the military or healthcare or not for profit or the arts. And there was one person in particular, uh, speaking of the arts, he was coming from a background where he's a Broadway actor and yet was really drawn. He understood that he wanted to earn an MBA mm -hmm. so that he could go back and really have an impact on how an arts institution is run. Um, and being able to work with him through that process and then help him to realize that potential and get back to that goal of helping to run an arts organization and understanding what good business practices he could bring to that arts organization um, was incredibly exciting for me. It was fulfilling. And the exciting piece, if I had to identify it, was the transformation of watching him go from, I've done these things on Broadway that I'm proud of, but I don't 
forget how they're remotely relevant to leading an organization sure. and being able to, to help him to identify, well, when you do this, this is why it, it's important to, uh, to an MBA program, to an employer, um, watching the light bulb go on for him and recognizing that he had tremendous value and a great voice to be able to bring to teams and organizations, uh, that to me was incredibly exciting. I love that story. And um, certainly, you know, we see students from all different kinds of industries, um, both the traditional and the non-traditional. Um, and it's always, I, I just love these kinds of like, oh, you never really thought that that would be a trajectory for someone that had been on Broadway. And yet, you know, it sounds like you were really instrumental in helping them sort of think through, <clears throat> excuse me, where are all those points of intersection? Um, Michael, before we take leave this morning, is there anything else, you know, random? things you want people to know about you that you'd like to share? Um, I was one of those folks coming from a liberal arts background. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, that, that often is a surprise to folks. And the fact that I'm coming first and foremost as an educator, mm -hmm. um, my background as with yours is, uh, is from an education perspective. And so I, I hope that that's something that is helpful to the students and clients with whom I'll work, is understanding that m what drives me is, is helping them to understand the process. Um, not only because of my own experience in the marketplace, but because my orientation is to really help them to feel that sense of their light bulbs going on and that they understand the process, that it becomes less mysterious and that they have both a measure of control over it and that they understand what choices are ahead of them as they get better and better at understanding the processes that they're going through. I am so glad I got to start a morning with you, Michael. It's such a pleasure to see you. <laughs> Um, well, thank you so much for having me, Judith. It's been that, a pleasure to spend this the time This is great. With you. I feel like this is like an all-star cast. So I hope you have a great day. Look forward <laughs> thank to you. seeing you, you too. soon. Be well. Okay. Thanks, Michael. Bye-bye. Thanks.